okay so i am staring here because uh, the light is looking a little bit like a disco stroboscope in the back because uh, it's evening i usually don't record so late in the evening and so i put on some lights and the fan is going on so you see some effect of the fan well okay so I am not doing these things in a very professional way. If you are used to seeing videos on YouTube which are made in a studio with all kinds of fancy animations and so on, then you know that I'm just sitting here in my apartment and you can see the door in the back. And Anyway, so here we are going to live, uh, learn a little bit more about who is actually looking at climate change all over the world i'm saying glaciers are melting the arctic is warming faster and sea levels are rising and so on and so forth who's tracking all these things well there is an international uh, group of scientists who do a lot of these things so this is titled one degree warmer it's warmer since the industrial revolution so the hottest year ever measured the driest november the longest heat wave these are kind of things you read one weather record after another has fallen in recent years i'm recording this in june 2024 and 2023 was a smashing record warm year with all kinds of floods and droughts and wildfires and cyclones and so on and so forth and 2024 continues to be warm as well so that in itself does not say anything about the climate just about the weather things happen all over the place a bizarrely warm winter or a really weird hailstorm can happen even when there is no climate change when there is no climate change we generally call it natural climate variability variability means change can be daily variability so how things change from one day to the next seasonal variability season to season changes interannual variability how things change from one year to the next and so on and so forth when we say climate change usually how it is changing let's say over the last hundred years or two hundred years and we just said in the previous podcast that climate has always changed in the past but we also said that now in general when we say climate change we are talking about the change because of the increases in greenhouse gases which are because of us burning fossil fuels doesn't mean the natural variability that has always happened is not happening that also keeps happening but we add something on top right so weird winters and so on can happen but when lots of those things happen too many times then it does seem as if there is something going on it's not just the normal climate anymore compare it to a dice you know you know a die that you throw and maybe you are too young to know what that means but you can ask your parents and they will show you surely you can throw a s uh, six so the die has things on each side numbers one to six because it has six sides and when you throw it it is supposed to be random so it throws up different number each time but if you throw it a hundred times it's possible that sometimes you get six each time for three times or four times and so on it every throw you have the same chance of a six as the previous throw so every time you throw it there is a chance of some number coming up and each number has an equal chance of coming up if the die is very fair and it's not been you know changed in some way but if you keep on throwing one six after another too many times then it becomes a little suspicious hey you can buy weighted dice at a toy store for a couple of pennies dollars rupees rubles dinars dirhams or whatever which means it has been tinkered with to make 
control certain numbers more often. Why are we talking about it? Because someone who throws a six a few times in a row isn't necessarily a cheat, but if they go on throwing sixes, then it might make you think that maybe they are cheating. In the same way, not every weather record is necessarily the fault of climate change, so natural weather is still happening, but when you have so many new records breaking in temperature and heavy rain and snowstorms or whatever else, then there has to be something going on. So we are showing a die here now with sunny side on this way, on this face, clouds here and maybe rain on this side and so on and so forth. So when you throw it, weather can happen. At the moment, the average temperature around the world is over one degree higher than in 1850 when we started to have a good record of measured temperatures. You think that it doesn't sound like much? Then think back to the hockey stick. Remember, over the past thousand years, the temperature has fluctuated around 13.5 degrees when you average over the globe at the surface. Sometimes it was 13.3, sometimes it was 13.6, but it stayed pretty, mu pretty much around 13.5, a little bit up and down, but around the same average. The rings and the air bubbles inside the uh, ice rods show that it remained around 13.5 degrees for at least 10,000 years when the last ice age disappeared. So the Holocene, H-O-L-O-C-E-N-E, -E, that we are living in, has remained fairly steady till about 1850. So compared to that, an increase of one degree in less than 200 years is ridiculously high and in recent years. This increase in temperature has been speeding up, which means we are not only warming, but we are warming faster and faster. If it continues, it will take only 50 years to add another degree of warming. Okay, Once every five or six years, a thick report comes out, published by the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel, on climate change IPCC. You are too young to understand it, don't worry about it. All the governments around the world, well almost all the governments around the world got together under the United Nations, I'm sure you have heard of uh, the United Nations, under the United Nations in the late 1980s and 1990s, maybe you were not even born then, maybe your parents weren't even married then and so on and so forth, but if you're old enough, then a uh, new uh, structure under the United Nations got formed called the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, which created another thing called you know, there have been things like World Meteorological Organization under which you have the World Climate Research Program and the World Weather Research Program and then you have the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. All these are groups of scientists formed under international agreements and this is IPCC is a group of thousands of scientists from all over the world who research, do research into climate change, not just about weather and climate, but also impact of climate on agriculture, on health and economies and so on and so forth, right? If it gets warmer and warmer, maybe some countries will suffer and their economy will not grow as much or will not be as stable. So the scientists certainly don't agree about everything, but they do have to write a report to together. The result is a kind of average of their conclusion. So they all come together, they all take the scientific evidence that's written by, you know, scientists that has been verified by other scientists and so on, and they put together this big synthesis they to take all the results and they make a summary of some sort of all these results and the result is a kind of uh, average of their conclusions. If a whole lot of countries say climate change is definitely the result of human activity based on science, based on scientific evidence, and a few countries say climate change may be the result of human activities, then 
the conclusion will be that climate change is most likely the result of human activity. So you cannot say we know for sure that climate change is the result of human activity because not everybody agrees. Does that mean they are denying science while well, they are saying I understand the science but it is not so clear to me that it is completely convincingly saying that we have caused the change. They say, so they say we agree that human beings are causing something so we will say climate change is most likely the result of human activity okay the last IPCC report was almost 5,000 pages long in it the scientists say that by the end of the century by the end of this century 2100 the earth will certainly be 1.5 degrees warmer than it was in 1850 even if we seal up all the chimneys exhaust pipes and cows right now which is obviously not going to happen all the CO2 have emitted remember CO2 is inert it stays in the atmosphere for many centuries so it has been accumulating so even if we magically stopped and closed down all the chimneys and exhaust pipes and stopped the cows somehow from farting we will still continue to warm and we will warm beyond 1.5 degrees compared to 1850 by 2100 okay so it might be possible to limit the increase of this warming to maybe two degrees compared to 1850 but we'll have to work hard to do it close all the coal fired power plants because coal is an energy source but it produces more co2 per unit of energy when you see a bulb it says it's a 9 watt bulb or a 20 watt bulb that's the amount of energy it requires to burn so energy is measured in these units that you probably have learned about so we have to close all the coal fired power plants and build wind turbines and eat fewer hamburgers because hamburgers from come from cows and cows are an expensive way of producing food how do you count it if you just grow rice you see how much water it takes how much fertilizer it takes and what it does to the emissions because it does produce some emissions as we said rice paddies produce methane for example and then you take one calorie of meat from a cow from a burger and see how much food it takes how much grass it takes and how much emission it produces and you will see that hamburgers are very expensive in terms of emissions to the atmosphere if we don't do anything at all and just keep on burning coal and cutting down trees then in 2100 will be four degrees hotter than in 1850 it could be five it could be 3.5 or it could be six so there is some uncertainty suddenly a volcano may go off or suddenly a war may happen which increases emissions and causes all kinds of perturbations and wildfires may happen so as we go forward in 2100 we are mostly guessing many things scientifically guessing not just guessing and scientifically we can say that if we continue to emit greenhouse gases like we are doing now and continue to use coal fired power plants and drive cars that are burning fossil fuels and exhaust pipes are emitting greenhouse gases and chimneys are emitting greenhouse gases we are eating a lot of hamburgers into the future to 2100 and not caring about the environment and the greenhouse gases then we are most likely to cross four degrees warmer than 1850 okay but from 13.5 degrees to 17.5 degrees in two and a half centuries the hockey stick that we looked at how the temperatures have warmed quickly since the industrial revolution is growing really quickly the climate has often changed in the past as we said ice ages have come and gone but never this fast so the consequences of an increase of four degrees are impossible to predict very accurately and you want to be able to predict it in your backyard in your backyard what will happen if we warm by four degrees by 2100 and that increase 
of temperature is just an average of the global temperature. If you're in the Middle East, the warming may be 6 degrees or 7 degrees. In the Arctic, it may be 8 degrees. Imagine that, okay? Some places will warm up less and so there will be place also places where the temperature will go up by even more than 4 degrees. So here is a big thick climate change report from the IPCC, 5,000 pages, that's half a tree, so we have to be careful when we do this, plus to produce this report, a lot of computer time is used, your computer, if you have one uh, video game you're playing, it gets hot because it's using energy, 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 needs electricity. So when we produce such a big reports and make a lot of model simulations, what does it mean? If you don't understand, don't worry about it. We are also emitting greenhouse gases, so we have to be careful. So all these reports, people take it, they look at the impacts on how the glacier is melting, snowman is melting, some f species of fish are dying, there is some cactus, some trees are dying, and some oil leaks, and this poor pelican here is suffering, and we are still emitting, and so on and so forth. So people are saying, it is changing, climate is happening, climate change is happening. And somewhere it says, no, it is not. And th some people say it is catastrophic change, and some say it will be all okay. So written by thousands of scientists, basically takes all scientific evidence and tries to put together something that all the governments have to agree upon. That's why they use words very carefully saying, the climate change is happening or most likely happening. It is caused by human activities or most likely it is caused by human activities and so on. Okay, so we'll come back and uh, move to melting poles so here we'll say but hey it's not 2100 yet so there is a good chance that the increase will be somewhere between 1.5 degrees and 4 degrees because we don't know what we will do in the future how many wars we will have and how smart we will get and whether we'll start all using electric vehicles and solar and wind turbines and so on and eat less hamburgers or maybe hamburgers will be made in the lab in the laboratory so that you don't have cows but you just have some scientists making hamburgers in the laboratory so you can already see the consequences though glaciers are melting sea level is rising weather is acting strangely and that's just the beginning children the idea is not to scare you, the idea is to say we are doing something that's affecting the climate and hence your future, but maybe there is something we can do about it as well, okay? So we'll come back and continue to discuss about the melting snow and so on and see what meltwater actually means. See you in the next podcast, children.